I am excited about these four areas of ministry because they form a picture of how we follow Jesus as his disciples. For me, it's more than a good place to start, but it focuses on what Jesus did in his ministry. New churches uh, almost instinctively understand that they must reach out to the community, that, uh, that they must pour themselves out, so to speak, to the community. I love this mission and I love this ministry and uh, what gets me excited every day are the opportunities for engagement with the church and to invite the church uh, to join me in being engaged with the world. We need to tell the story, tell the numbers, put a face on the numbers so it's not just uh, millions of people, then move them from awareness to advocacy on behalf of those persons who are sick. Our United Methodist Bishops stand before us as we seek spiritual counsel and guidance. They stand beside us as we reach out to the poor and heal the sick. And they stand behind us as we support our lay and clergy in ministry. Early in this quadrennium, they came together and identified seven vision pathways. From there, the Council of Bishops began exciting conversations, study, and prayerful consideration about how local churches, districts, and annual conferences can impact the future of the United Methodist Church. Four areas of focus emerged from this process, providing ways for the people of the church to accept God's invitation to become transforming in the way in which we engage our world. I want the person in the pew to know that um, all of our best leadership comes from local congregations. And to see themselves as a uh, nurturing, incubating, training ground for leaders in the church. I can't think of anyone I know personally who is uh, a leader in the life of the church who has not been shaped and nurtured by the ministry of a loving um, and intentional uh, Christian congregation. One of the best ways uh, to reach new people is, is through the planting of new congregations. New congregations attract more people, uh, younger people, more diverse uh, populations of persons. And uh, we know that if we want to grow the church and really uh, reach uh, the communities where we are located, that one of the best ways to do that is by planting new congregations. Everyone who sits in the pew um, is called to be in ministry with the poor, and everyone has a gift, everyone has a talent, everyone has experience and skills that are needed for this ministry with the poor. There is a place for your passion, there is a place for your gift, there is a place for your experience. We know that poverty is the root of uh, many, many of the world's problems. We know that Jesus paid lots of attention to people who were poor and invited his followers to care for them and respond. We know that uh, where there's poverty, there's also disease. And so we in the church want to respond with an opportunity now uh, to focus in a special way on the, these special diseases of malaria and HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis that will enable the church to be actively involved. These four areas of focus challenge us to consider where is God leading us? What does our Wesleyan DNA ask of us? And are we responding, witnessing, and serving as our faith calls us to do? Part of our task is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to invite people to follow Him faithfully, and to change the world. Uh, we can't change the world if we don't change ourselves. The Episcopal Fund enables those who are called forth as bishops and led by the Holy Spirit to serve the people of the United Methodist Church and to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the profound transformation of the world. <laughs>